Good morning guys and welcome back to Ultimate Exotics. So this morning um, I went through a couple of the cages that I've seen. We got some eggs finally which we're super stoked about. We have been getting a few eggs here and there but the females are all starting to lay now. So I think I saw about four or five clutches. Um, so I thought it'd be cool just to show you these clutches and then also show you how we incubate the eggs and how the eggs go from uh, the egg laying box to the incubation box which we then put in the incubator. So um, I thought I'd just show you that, so let's go and check them out. Okay, so let's have a look at, I think it was this girl that has laid a clutch of eggs. Let's have a quick look. Oh uh, yeah, there you go. And now this is our apricot sockhead pueblin. So the apricot is the color, so pueblin is normally black and white, like you see this male here. Uh, but where the white is, it is an apricot color. And you'll see her shortly. I'll see if I can open that up. Yeah, there you go. I'm not going to disturb it too much. But there you can see the apricot color. Um, and then the sock head, it's a broader, the section where the apricot is, it's much wider than normal. So no normally their bands are pretty evenly spread out with a sock head um, mutation you can see that it's much wider spread where the white would be or the apricot would be. So that's an apricot sock head. So nice clutch of eggs. Looks like maybe eight or nine eggs there. Beautiful big white eggs. Okay, then this girl here, you can see all the peat has been pushed to the one side of her egg laying box. So let's have a look, this is our mix mix. And there she is, and oh, those unfortunately don't look good. And I was a little bit worried about this girl because last year she also gave us a bad clutch and I was really hoping for a good clutch from her. But you can see how soft those eggs are. Um, it means they're infertile. You see they have no, they're not like this, uh, you know, rigid, um, clean white color that you see with the fertile eggs. Um, so unfortunately, Fortunately, they're all really soft and don't have really good shape and that means that those are most likely infertile we will candle them just to double check and look for vein development but uh, just by looking at those I'm sure that those are infertile maybe there's that one egg that might be okay but that's a pretty shame so we'll just have to keep an eye on her so that's now the second year she's laid infertile eggs unfortunately this is um, part of breeding reptiles um, you know, sometimes you have good days and you have bad days and good clutches and bad clutches. And uh, so if this is the second year she's breeding infertile eggs, we might take her out of breeding. Um, and she'll just become a retired breeder and she'll go to someone as a pet. Because uh, she'll still live, an, um, you know, a, a number of good years. Um, and she'll make a great pet. They're such beautiful snakes, easy to handle and non-aggressive. So yeah, let's go have a look at the other clutch that we saw that was due to be laid and hopefully those eggs look better. Okay, yeah, oh, there you go. That's a clear ice cream tub. So straight away you can see she's laid. So a Zambian green female. And there she is with the beautiful clutch of eggs. Such an exciting time of the year. Um, you know, it's all the hard work has paid off. Been a lot of preparation, all the cycling, all the feeding making sure everything's in good health, getting all the pairings done correctly. Um, we like to put the male with a female multiple times um, and we have a lot of females, so it's a lot of work. Um, but when you see the eggs, it really is um, such a great sign. All the hard work's paid off. It's such a rewarding thing, um, taking care of an animal as best as you can and then breeding them and seeing a result um, because these animals wouldn't breed in captivity if they weren't weren't happy and all the you know if the environment wasn't correct they wouldn't be breeding so successfully okay next clutch let's have a look here oh there we go beautiful clutch from this butter house snake and um, you can see the two darker eggs those are the infertile eggs um, so we won't even bother incubating those we'll just take them um, We'll separate them from the clutch and uh, the rest do look good so we're going to pop those in the incubator so that's really great. 
beautiful clutch that you can see from that butter house snake. Okay, and then one more to look at for today. And there you go. You can see the clutch of eggs at the back there. Real beautiful clutch of eggs. Wow, look at those. That's really nice. Super happy about that. Beautiful clutch of eggs from this butter female. Love these house snakes. Okay, so I thought it would be a cool idea to show you guys um, how we set up our eggs for the incubator. So you can just see while we're having a look at uh, these clutches, how they go from the um, egg laying box to the incubation box, which then goes into the incubator. So this is our clutch from our um, apricot Pueblin milk snake. Um, so she laid this beautiful clutch of eggs. So this you can see is the in the egg laying box and it's um, what we put inside is uh, only a couple of centimeters deep of um, damp uh, peat moss. And this is really, it works really well. Um, you just got to make sure it's not wet, it's just slightly damp and that's where um, a snake wants to lay its eggs. We make sure that um, we put it on the warm side of the enclosure which is at about uh, 28 degrees Celsius in here and uh, the female then um, goes and lays her eggs in here. Now, when the eggs are laid in a clump like this, we um, will just leave them in that clump and we'll obviously move them as is into the incubation box. Um, if they lay them loosely and we can separate the eggs easily, we then separate them. But with the colubrids, most of the time, the eggs don't need any separation. We can just place them as they are. They're quite, um, they're stuck together quite hard. So um, there's no need to try and pull them apart. Uh, so we're just going to leave them like that. Um, so in the meantime, let's us um, set up our egg laying, uh, sorry, our incubation tub. And what we have here is vermiculite. Um, other people use perlite or a mix of perlite and vermiculite. The perlite works just as well. Um, it's just that the vermiculite is more commonly available where we stay. And I've been using it now for about 15 years uh, or even longer than 15 years to hatch um, reptile eggs and it just works well for us and I understand it quite well. Um, so I'm comfortable with, with using it. Um, I use obviously the more coarse one, you do get a fine one. The fine one I think just gets stuck to everything so this coarse one is quite nice. Um, also has, um, you know, allows a lot of gaps uh, which hold oxygen uh, which is good for the eggs while they're um, incubating. Okay, so now we're going to add uh, the vermiculite first. Let's just turn the scale on. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to just add the vermiculite. And we're just going to keep adding until we get to a good amount. Uh, it just needs to be maybe a few centimeters thick in the tub. Um, and let's go to 90 grams. Almost there, 90 grams. Okay, and now um, that's a nice amount of vermiculite. And now we're going to add another 90 grams of water. So it's going to add up to 180 grams. And then we're going to be a little bit more. And it's a little bit over, but that's perfectly fine as long as it's close enough. So there we did we did it so it was a it was 90 grams of um, vermiculite and it was a little bit more than 90 grams of water so that's your one to one weight ratio um let's just move this out the way so now we've got our good mixture of vermiculite and you know you'll feel it's damp but it's not wet and um, when you squeeze it there shouldn't be really any water coming out um so it's just this nice damp um vermiculite which uh, holds moisture really well and throughout the incubation, um, this amount of moisture should be fine. At times, if you have a really dry incubator or, you know, you're in a very dry environment, you might see towards the end of the 60 days of incubation, you might see the eggs um, denting in a little bit. And at that time, you just add a, a little bit of water, a dash of water into the corners um, just to raise the humidity up a bit. So that's something to just look out for towards the end of incubation. But... Most of the time when you have other eggs in the incubator, um, all that moisture uh, increases the humidity in the incubator and uh, we don't have to add any water whatsoever. Um, so yeah, so now let's add our eggs. So this is where the female laid the eggs and now we're gonna add them into our incubation box. And we're just gonna make a little indent there um, where we're gonna put the eggs. So, I just make a little dent like that 
I'm going to take the clutch of eggs. Okay, let's take them and we're just going to move them carefully into the incubation box. Put them nicely in the middle there. That looks really good. What a beautiful clutch of eggs. She's such a good female. So the bottom eggs will be, I would say, half buried. So you can see there, the bottom eggs are only half buried. The top, top eggs are all on top and above, which is fine. And then just a few small holes in the tub, just to allow a little bit of airflow. You don't want it to be completely sealed. Um, so we just put a few small holes in the top. And there you go, you can see them there. That is, for us, that is the perfect way to incubate them and it works really well. And uh, we're gonna obviously write the name of the female on there and the number of the female, and then obviously the date, which is very important. We're gonna put the date there. And then, um, yeah, so we're gonna put them in the incubator and set them at about 28 to 29 degrees Celsius. And at that temperature in about 60 days, we should have some beautiful apricot Pueblin milk snakes. So that's how we set the eggs up for incubation. Okay, so let us put these guys in the incubator. We've got a few eggs in here already. This is just one of our incubators and they're all starting to fill up, which is such a great thing. And there's our clutch of eggs we just set up. And now they're in our incubator at, um, right now they're be between 27 and 28 degrees, but then we'll slowly move it up to about 29 in the day. And um, yeah, in 60 days, hopefully we're gonna get some beautiful babies. So that's how we do it. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing those awesome eggs. It's such an exciting time of the year for us, and we'll keep you updated on their incubation and when they start hatching, we'll show you um, the process of them hatching. It's an incredible thing, and it's something that we just love seeing here at Ultimate Exotics. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. Please leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button, and most importantly, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Keep well. We'll see you in the next video. Cheers.